Hey everybody, welcome to the Jaywalker. Today, ghost story for Saturday, episode 14. It's all gonna be okay. So, to, to get into today's story, um, kinda wanna give a little background into, into the year that we had had <laughs> prior to to today's story. And that background is that you know, it was a rough year death-wise for, for me and my family. And by a rough year, I mean that we had lost my grandparents, uh, my dad's parents. Talked, with, talked about them um, in a previous story. They died within a couple of months of each other. My grandfather passing away in November of 2017 and my grandmother uh, two months later in January of 2018. And uh, then my, my wife's grandfather passed away uh, in April. 2018. And so we uh, we kind of started off um, on kind of rough terms um, with people in our family's passing. And you know, to tell you the truth, we probably would have been fine, you know, without having anyone else pass, but uh, you know. Life and death don't always wait for for us to be okay with everything that's gone on before something else happens. And in September of 2018, uh, we we lost my wife's mom. Now I I kind of bring this up because um, today's story involves her, um, and she was a, a very large part of of our lives. Uh, my wife. You know, she's got a small family. Uh, it's just her, her dad, and her sister, and her mom, and that was it. Um, and for me, you know, I was, you know, I was on my own uh, when I when I met my wife. I mean, kind of lived apart from my my parents. My dad lived, you know, probably 30 minutes away, 20 to 30 minutes away. My mom lived, you know, days away in Oklahoma. And so, um, so my mother-in-law kind of became a surrogate mama for me too, which you know was great. Um, she was a terrific person. My mother-in-law was a big personality. Um, she was a big part of, you know, not only, of course, my father-in-law. Uh, but also my my wife and my sister-in-law. I mean, just just big, big parts of everyone's lives, including my children and myself. And you know, to to say that we were shocked when she passed away was you know was selling short the amount of grief and the amount of pain and the amount of just absolute shock and disbelief that we felt, you know, I mean, just we can't even describe that. And, you know, with any, with any death there comes grieving and there comes, there comes some, some difficult decisions and different things that, that are made. And you know, with that, with my with my wife's family being so small, it was just you know her parents and her sister and her. You know, it, it fell to to my wife and I to make a lot of. You know, my wife was the the older the older sibling. My father-in-law was really not in a good frame of mind to make a lot of the decisions. So. My wife and I were left to make a lot of those decisions to really set a lot of the final preparations up, you know, and uh, yeah, along with, you know, of course my father-in-law's blessing, which, you know, it was pretty much everything we, um, we wanted he, he signed off on and 
but uh, but it was a it was a tough time. And um, a f just a few days after um, my mother-in-law passed, you know, we were all still in a state of shock, a state of disbelief. Just you know, grief was starting to to really set in for for us. And you know, again, just a few days few days into all of this process, my wife woke up to a visitor, and it was her mom. I don't remember all of the conversation, and I don't remember if my wife knows or remembers all that was said and talked about in that, in our, really a short amount of time, but my my mother-in-law, my wife said, came and, you know, I, I believe she, she said that she was dressed in white, she just came in and, and sat down on the bed and just told my wife that everything was going to be okay, that everything was all right. Um, my wife you know, was definitely not not upset or scared by this visit. As I've mentioned in previous videos, you know, part of our belief system is that, you know, that that place where the spirits, the essences, the intelligences, whatever you believe, um, might be left of those that, that pass on that isn't that isn't this mortal, mortal body, you know, is here, is close to us, and stays close, um, or closer, um, until a lot of those final preparations get made, and, you know, even sometimes, um, until, until after the funeral. Um, I've heard some people theorize, and, but it just seemed that, that my mother-in-law needed us to know that she was okay, that things were all right. And um, I, I, think, I think that coming to my wife was probably the, the best way. Um, you know, as I've mentioned before, my wife and I are both nurses, so our, our perception on a lot of the stuff is different than someone who doesn't have a medical background. While it's still tough for us and still we still have a lot of grief and a lot of you know different feelings about it, you know, it was it was easier for us to see a bigger picture. And you know, we've we've seen and we've experienced a few things since this experience to let us know that she might still be hanging around and, and visiting just to just to check in on us from occasion from from time to time and on occasion. But that's today's that's today's walk. Thanks for joining me. If you like it, subscribe, like the video, share it with the people you know. We'll see you soon. Come walk with me again.